Self-leadership always, always, always precedes team leadership. How we operate, how we lead ourselves, it always impacts the organizations that we get to serve, which then impacts the clients, the customers, the community. Well, as Christian business leaders, we all want to have a positive impact on our society, our churches, our families, our companies. And in this episode, Daniel Harkavy will deliver the core components of achieving those transformational goals. And it begins with taking care of our own leadership growth and personal spiritual health. I'm Ken Powell, host of FCCI's Pathway to Purpose podcast, and it is our desire to deliver that very goal of weekly segments of top-tier Christian leadership training content through this podcast platform. So just keep listening, and let's do exactly what Daniel will encourage and equip us to accomplish. Here's Daniel Harkavy. Show me he is real. Show me... He is real. I think that is the plea. That is the the request. I think that is what is deep inside of all of those that we interact with day in and day out. Don't, Don't tell me. Show me. Show me he is alive and real. And as business leaders, because of the risk that we've taken, because of the opportunity that God's given to each and every one of us, we have a platform. Whether you like it or not, when you're on that platform, you're being evaluated. The decisions you make, the words you speak, how you look at Those that come into your office day in and day out. Those that engage with you, that purchase your products or services. Those that are on your payroll, they're watching. And what they're wanting to see is the reality of God in who we are. So this morning, when we get to spend the next 41 minutes together, I'm going to be talking to you as business leaders And I'm going to be talking to you about business leadership. Because my desire is that the time that I get to spend with you today, the fruit that hopefully comes of it, will better equip you to be the best leaders that you can be. Because we have a tremendous opportunity. A tremendous opportunity and and a significant responsibility. Before I get into some best practices, I want to tell you that I absolutely have a burden for this morning's conversation. And it is the result of having a front row seat at an event that's unfolding right now that's in the media that is breaking my heart, absolutely devastating me. And what it's all about is about one man, one leader, who has not effectively shown those that were on payroll in years past that Christ was real. Forbes magazine last week said that this church is the Enron of the church world. I'm talking about a very large church in the Northwest. 15,000 folks attend or used to attend week in and week out. I'm talking about a church where the leader, whom I believe to be a God-fearing, gifted, called man, has polarized the church. And in his younger years, how he managed and how he engaged with those on payroll, with those on his team, his management practices were poor. And today, he'll tell you, he will admit that he was not an effective leader. He was not an effective people developer. He was not an effective manager. And as a result of that, today, he's on sabbatical. The church is maybe one-third of the size. The financial problems are continuing to grow. The church is in crisis. New York Times, Forbes magazine, every small paper and and large paper throughout the Northwest and, and many now throughout the world, they're Focusing in, the world is focusing in 
on a church, the bride of Christ. And the reason for it is because of poor leadership. I want you to write this down because there is one thing that I think is truly the most important message that I'm going to deliver to you today. And that is self-leadership always precedes team leadership. Self-leadership always, always, always precedes team leadership. How we operate, how we lead ourselves, it always impacts the organizations that we get to serve, which then impacts the clients, the customers, the community. And if we want to bring this closer to home, this impacts our marriages, this impacts our, our families, how we parent, how we grandparent. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about self-leadership, and I'm going to, to talk about some aspects of, of leadership, the anatomy of a leader. And as I do, I'm absolutely confident that in our conversation, there will be at least one opportunity for you to raise the game. There will be one opportunity for you to make a decision, one opportunity for you ad to, ad to adopt a best practice, to work on a new skill so that you can be used to more effectively influence and lead those that are on your payroll, those that are engaging with your company day in and day out, and those in your community. So as I'm going through these, I just want you to ask yourself, is this my area for improvement? So, the anatomy of a leader. The first thing that I want to focus on is the most important thing, and that is how is your thinking? I've got a team of 22 coaches. Uh, there are about 50 of us in the organization in the Northwest, and we're spread throughout out the country, and our days are spent working with business leaders like you. We work with leaders who are leading small to mid-sized companies as well as multi-billion dollar global organizations. We work with organizations that are led by Christ followers as well as those from all walks of life and faith. When we see an organization that is being held back, when we see that there is some form of dysfunction, when we see there's opportunity for an organization to grow, this is where we'll always start. And we'll start with you, the leader. And it has to do with your operating system, your thinking. What are you putting into your mind day in and day out? See, here's a, a, great, a great enemy of success. And the great enemy of success is that we stop growing. The best leaders that I've had the opportunity to work with, leaders that are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, these are men and women who have this curious spirit. They're hungry, they're humble, they want to learn. They want to learn day in and day out. They don't know it all. They have a very, very serious plan in place that will enable them to continue growing and learning because they know that their thinking needs to continually be stretched. They know they need outside insight. They know that they need to learn more about changes in demographics, changes in, in products, technology, systems. They need to continually be one step ahead. And there's a humility that goes with that. And the great enemy of success in business is that we think we have arrived, and instead of that continual growth path, that, that excitement, that, that energy that we used to put into ourselves growing, bless you, so that we would be more effective leaders, what we do is we start to build a fence around our business because it's now comfortable, and it's now serving us, and it's affording us a lifestyle. It's affording us comforts, and what we do is we build a fence around it. We want to protect it. And when we do that, there's a mental shift in our thinking to where our, our, whole, our whole operating system shifts from being on the offense to being on the defense. And there are a lot of your organizations, a lot of your organizations where there's more opportunity for you to grow. There's more opportunity for your organization to serve more people, to make a greater difference. But the problem is you've built a fence around your business because it's comfortable. And you're not growing. You're not taking risk. Everybody, everybody who is given the opportunity to lead, they're given this asset, or maybe you were founders, and, and you saw something that was not yet visible to other people. 
there was a, a season in your life where you were willing to risk, 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 learn, 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 grow, grow, grow. You wanted outside insight. You were the, the most hungry learner in the community. How's your thinking? Here's why this is so important. Your thinking, it impacts your beliefs. What you're putting into your mind, it either adds to, challenges, or detracts from what we believe. That's why it's so important for all of us, first thing in the day, to be making sure that our oper operating system's right. I know that when I start my day off right, when I start my day off face down, when I start my day off with the sword, when I start my day off in meditation, in prayer, putting in the good stuff, I'm, I'm thinking about that, I'm meditating on the word. It impacts my beliefs. And when I miss that, my courage starts to fade. When I miss that, I start to be susceptible to becoming off track. My thinking impacts my beliefs. My beliefs and my thinking impact my mindset. My mindset, your mindset, it's everything. How do you see all of the people that you interact with? Is your mindset that each and every person that you see day in and day out, they are divine appointments? That little 16-year-old that comes in through the doors, they get their first paycheck at your organization. I love the testimony this morning. Way to go. You're a difference maker, Michael. Way to go. I love it. Each and every day, making a difference. Is your mindset that they're divine appointments who have the opportunity to grow, that want to be challenged, and they want to be a part of something special? When you walk through the office, you, when you walk through the factory, when you walk through the plant, every single morning is your mindset that I am now going to surround myself with the most critical and important asset in the organization. My thinking impacts my beliefs, which impacts my mindset, which impacts my actions. And now we're starting to get to the surface, the exterior stuff, my actions, which impact our results. If we don't get this right, there's a lot hanging in the balance. If we don't get this right, those last two boxes are what the world sees. They see the results that we get in our organization, and they see and feel our actions. And then they make decisions about whether or not he is real by the results we get and by the actions that they see manifesting themselves in our lives day in and day out. So they make a decision on whether he is real or not based upon our mindset, our beliefs, and thinking. They're, they're, they're assessing that, whether they're followers or not, based solely on the results we get and the actions we take. Does this make sense? Okay, let me tell you why this is so critical. A God-loving, God-fearing man who has a calling and anointing on his life, who is so gifted at communicating the word. Churches sprouting up everywhere. A kingdom man, a kingdom leader. He's being taken out. His family threatened. Polarized the Christian community because of actions and results. And they're making decisions about who he is on the inside. What does he really believe? It's causing some to walk away from the church. We've got brothers and sisters who were in ministry. We actually heard it here today, this morning. I'd never want to come back into those four walls. All right, if it's true for the church, how much more true is it for us in business? We have huge opportunity day in and day out. Show me he's real. What are you putting in your mind? Do you have outside insight to keep you on track? What are your governing tools that you're using day in and day out to make sure that you are the most effective Christ-like leader in the community, in your business, in the marketplace? Maybe your opportunity to improve today is you need to ramp up your thinking. You've been coasting. You're comfortable. You know, what got me here, it's good. I'm building the fence around it. I don't need it. In that moment, your business stops climbing and it starts to plateau and it's only a matter of time before it will start to decline 
And then what will take place is you will experience pain on the dashboard of your business, whatever metrics you're looking at on a day-in and day-out basis, which is something I'm going to be talking about in the moments ahead. It will tell you, alert, alert, problem. And then you will start to get outside insight, and you'll grow, 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 because you want to avoid the pain. And what I'm asking you is, is that descent, is that decline truly necessary, or have you placed a very high value on your thinking and growing and being proactive and intentional and making sure that you're continually getting that outside insight. Now, here's the cool thing. I'm at an FCCI conference. I know what you do week in and week out. I know how you get together in offices and you sharpen one another. I know that you jump into the word. I know that this is the conversation. So for those of you who have been doing this for years, continue. May this serve to be an encouragement. Maybe this is not your area of improvement. For you first timers, whoever invited you here, Listen, this could be the, the vehicle that you plug into to get that outside insight, to get that sharpening, to challenge your thinking, to make sure that your thinking lines up with results because this is where it starts. The next area of your leadership that I want you to look at is your perspective, and there are four areas of perspective, four different views that I think we leaders need to see. When I'm working with a leader, when our coaches are working with leaders, the opportunity at hand or the crisis at hand is usually the result of them not seeing one of these four perspectives clearly. The first is current reality. So my question to you today is, what is it that you're looking at day in and day out, week in, week out, that tells you what your current reality is? There's no room for sloppy leadership or sloppy management. Let me tell you how you become a disconnected leader. I don't care how visionary you are, how charismatic you are, how brilliant your ideas are. If you want to finish and finish well, if you want to build something that's lasting, that's amazing, you need to, to be in touch with current reality. In this neck of the woods, just a few weeks ago, a client of ours, a very large firm, average age of the 70,000 or so in this firm, they're probably 22, 23 years old, Chick-fil-A right up the road. Truett Cathy moved, he left Atlanta, went to heaven. I've had the privilege of working with that executive team for almost a decade, working with hundreds of leaders within that organization. Up to just a few years ago, Truett, in his 90s, was still involved in making the decision as to which operators got more than one store. His son Dan, the CEO, very connected to what's happening day in and day out, but Truett, in his 90s, he still had a say-so. He was connected to current reality. His perspective on current reality was tight. He was still involved in the business. May this serve to be an encouragement and an exhortation to any of you who have been in the battle for a long time. You're showing signs of it, like I am, although I have more than Walt, and Walt... He picked on me a little this morning, called me a hippie, which is kind of weird, conservatives. <laughs> You're clean. I do need a haircut. You're right. <laughs> he caught me. He said, Daniel, you look a little lazy this morning. Eh? I am. <laughs> current reality. How's your perspective on current reality? If we're going to follow you, we need to know that you see what's happening in the business. You're in touch with what's happening on the manufacturing line. You're, you're in touch with what the customer is experiencing. You know how the product works. You know how we're functioning in our job. You're connected to current reality. You have metrics you're looking at day in and day out, week in and week out. You know the trends. You know what's taking place today as well as what's coming around the corner because you're in touch with current reality. The first perspective, current reality. The second one, let's create a gap. The second one is long term. How's your vision? There's some fantastic engineer-type managers in the room, great strategists, amazing at resource management. But do you really see something in the future that is better than what we're experiencing today? As leaders, we need to see something in the future that is worth striving for. It's compelling. We need to see something where... These young people, or those that are older in life, they're on payroll, they're following, and what they're hoping for is 
that they, they are spending the majority of their waking hours in an organization that is headed somewhere and that tomorrow's reality is better than today's. And it's up to us as leaders to have that vision. And that vision needs to be clear and compelling and it needs to create a gap between current reality and future state. If we don't see that with clarity, then what we're going to be doing as leaders is we're going to be responding to, on our heels, the crises and opportunities that come our way. We're not operating from a, st a strategic offensive. Strategic offensive, that casting of vision that motivates action toward a better future state for the organization. As Daniel will continue on the next episode, he'll talk about the three B's of belonging, becoming, and building. He'll ask the questions, what do you belong to? Who are you becoming? And what are you building? So don't miss the next episode. Daniel mentioned FCCI groups on this episode and he mentioned the value of those groups. How are you doing getting that outside insight for your own personal leadership growth? So we want to encourage you, go to FCCI.org and look into being a part of FCCI's business leadership groups where you can get that outside insight that Daniel talked about. He also mentioned, of course, he was speaking at an FCCI international conference when he delivered this life-changing message. And he talked about the value of being together to receive this level of strategic training and spiritual growth and getting into those spiritual relationships. This year's conference is at the Everline Resort in Lake Tahoe. It's September 15 through 18. And we would encourage you to register. Again, you can go to FCCI.org or go directly to conference.fcci.org to register for this year's conference that will include speakers like Donald Miller, Richard Blackaby, Crawford Loritz, Jordan Rayner, and many more. So thanks for listening, and may God empower your leadership journey as you strive to lead a company for Christ.